This night working as a new EMT was one of the toughest nights of my life. I want to share with you what happened so you can learn from it and not make the mistake that I made. The first story I'm going to share with you was a mistake I made. I want to share it with you. The second one was a crazy call. I'm also going to share it with you. So let's get into it. So the first call we go to, I'm going to paint a picture for you here. Blizzard conditions. It was actually probably the worst blizzard that I ever experienced in my adult life. Now picture this. I've, I'm a brand new EMT at a commercial service and I'm working with an outstanding paramedic who's actually really soon about to become an FTO. And I'm actually in my first month or two of paramedic school at the same time. So we start our shift off and I'm actually pretty excited to work with this, this paramedic partner. And we, she just starts going, going back and forth, we're quizzing me on drugs, different things, doing really well. I'm like really happy, right? And we're, we're going along. I, I believe we did a few calls and we get to more into the night, right? Coming up around midnight, probably around that time, right? It's, it's getting into the, it's dark outside, it's getting into the night. And we go for a call out, it's deep, really deep inside this neighborhood. It's, and the only way to access the patient is just one road that I, I, I'm driving the ambulance or I have a part next to me, he's paramedic, I'm an EMT at this time. And the conditions are terrible. I mean, ambulances were getting stuck. Right, the, the conditions were so bad, people, some people weren't even able to make it in, into work, right? So we're shorthanded, ambulance being stuck, pretty chaotic scenes. This is my first bad winter storm I've ever worked. Blizzard is literally a blizzard, right? In the first one, I'm like, this is gonna be pretty, pretty crazy, right? Things you, you dream about, think about. So I'm going along, we go on this one road, we make it, but we can't ask the patient. We had to go over this really big hill of snow to even access the patient. So we had one of those like, like scoop stretchers we had to use, right? So we grab that, grab some gear, we ask the patient. Long story short, this patient had a severe, severe, severe frostbite to their foot. Not sure how it happened, but it happened. So we are able to access the patient and we're able to move the patient into the ambulance, right? So we're starting to move the patient to the ambulance. Well, here's what happens. I've never been in this neighborhood before. So I'm relying on my GPS at this point, right? Because it's the first time in the neighborhood, I'm, I'm new. So here's what I did. I move out of the neighborhood and I'm going back to that road that we came in on, right? My, you know, my partner's in the back doing patient care. As we're going along, there's two roads. The GPS is telling me to go on this road to the left. Straight ahead is another road, the road that we just came in on. I decide to take the road the GPS says. Mistake. So I'm going up this road and obviously it's a blizzard conditions. The GPS must have made a mistake or whatever it was because I end up going into like a housing, like a housing community. And guess what happens? It's such a narrow road I can't turn the ambulance. And guess what happens? The ambulance gets stuck. What a patient in the back of the ambulance because I went the wrong way in a blizzard. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty, so I'm sitting there going, well, you know that, uh, that new uh, EMT uh, license in my pocket? Uh, kick your trauma shoes out and go, just, just, let's just cut it up now. I'm screwed, I'm done. Oh, that was fun, right? So long story short ends up happening is we got stuck. You know, my, the paramedic part is yell, yelling at me based in the back of the ambulance saying, you go the way you came, you go the way you came. And I'm like, ah, oh, I didn't know. Sorry, you know. So why do I always tell you, and I'll tell you what happened in a moment, but I, I want to share a pearl with you now so you can learn. When you're in hazardous conditions, always go the way you came. Never go a new route. Get back to the main road by going the way you came into the scene, and then from the main road, then go on a hospital. That's the pearl. That's number one. Number two, if I knew the neighborhood better, right, then guess what would have happened? I would have been able to know where we were going, and I would have known that was the wrong road, right? I would have gone down the right road, which is the road we came in, and went to the main road and been good. This is why I tell all of you that I learned from this call to 
scout out the main roads and learn as much as you can off duty about the neighborhood that you're in so you know the roads better. So you, yes, you have GPS, yes, you're not gonna know every road, but you're not relying on it, you see? So I learned from that and I pass these tips on to you, right? So what ends up happening is the supervisor in a fly car comes out, takes the patient and they leave by fly car. We literally leave the ambulance, they're stuck. And we take our gear out and we just lock it up and say, God bless. <laughs> that is the condition that we had. So now let me tell you about the second call on the same night, the same night. This is a crazy call. Listen to this. So same partner, same call. Now imagine how I feel after all this happening. We got a new ambulance. We get back in service. Think about how I feel right now, right? Pretty crazy, right? I am like super nervous. I'm like, am I going to lose my job? Am I, am, I gonna, am I going to lose my license? Right? So I'm nervous, right? We get called to a lights and sirens, full-blown asthma attack with a man in the streets, middle-aged man in the streets. Now, thankfully, we are close to the hospital. We're only a five-minute drive to the hospital in normal conditions. In these conditions, make that 10, 15 minutes right? Because so many roads are blocked. People are, were leaving their cars out in the middle of the streets. So like ro they're stuck, roads, it's chaos. So literally, I, the way I had to do this maneuver, and I wish I could show you what the road looked like exactly, but I'll try to pin a picture for you. We get to the patient, he's out in the middle of the road, can't breathe, literally he's having a full-blown asthma attack. My partner is literally just like, I got this, drive as fast as you can in the hospital, and I'm gonna like start doing my, you know, albuterol, epinephrine, IVs, and everything, we, we gotta go, get going, you know, we gotta roll. So I'm like, okay, got it. I'm like, okay, well, I know where we're at, I know how to get to the hospital now, we're good with that, okay? We're not that down. So now, we feel close, I know the general closeness, right? We were out, we were out, way out on the last call, I'm like, I got this, right? So we turn, and gotta turn the ambulance around, we're starting to go, in front of the hospital, there's a blockage of cars on the way that I have to actually get to the hospital. So I literally, literally had to go like this. I had to go in the wrong way of traffic, lights and sirens, cut right about maybe like half a mile in front of the hospital. Then there, I have to get through these, this narrow opening of cars and the ambulance and the cars are coming like towards me in this blizzard conditions. One of the cars slides, just slids on the side of the ambulance. My partner goes, what's that? I'm like, it's all good. And, we're, and, the, and the, car is, the car is nervous, you know, because it got slid into us. We go forward and we're able to pull into the ambulance bay. As soon as we get the patient into the hospital and we move the patient from our stretcher to the bed, like that, respiratory arrest. So that is the story of one of, it still is to this day, one of the craziest shifts I ever worked. And that was a story of me as a brand new EMT about 19, 20 years old. So what is a lesson that I want you to take away from this call? Number one is always go the way you came in blizzard conditions. Number two, you wanna make sure that you learn the roads in your service area as much as possible. You don't want to rely on the GPS. Also, don't be scared to ask for help. I could have asked the paramedic, hey, you know, in the back of the ambulance, even though he was busy doing patient care, I could have asked him, said, hey, brother, should I go the way that we came to get out of here or should I follow the GPS? He may have said, go the way it came, right? But he's relying on me for that. I made a mistake, right? The biggest thing that I learned from the call earlier in the night was when the ambulance when that when the car kind of slid, the slid into the ambulance and it didn't make it was an accident just looks like a little just like grazed the ambulance i didn't freak out right i learned from the mistake i made earlier in the shift and said okay i'm not going to make the same mistake i'm not going to get all flustered i'm going to focus and i'm going to get through us we're going to do our job and i did and i learned from it and then the rest of the shift was great we did their calls and i ended up being on shift for 24 hours because crews weren't able to come in. I volunteered 24 hours of an on shift sitting in the ambulance waiting for calls because there was no base at this, uh, at this job. So I'm out in the ambulance 24 hours in my partner. Craziest shift I ever worked.
My goal with this video was for you to learn from my mistakes, and I hope that this video really helped you. If you're someone getting ready for school, if you're someone who's in school right now, or if you are somebody getting ready for your national registry exams, the first link in the description is what I give to all my students to get prepared for all that. EMT, advanced EMT, paramedic level exams, and school, first link in the description, 420 videos of content, plus access to our private student group to ask me questions and interact with all of our thousands of community members. I will see you in there and I give you a lifetime access. Take care.